Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Good evening, brothers and sisters, friends and family. It's good to be here again teaching the word of the Lord to you. In just a few hours, we're going to be in 2016. No doubt God has been faithful to you and I. We're still here in the land of the living, so he has a plan and a purpose for our lives. But 2015 is a year of grace and glory. God has been faithful to his word. Every single prophecy that God has given unto us, looking back, God fulfilled them. He gave us new houses, new cars, he gave us new jobs, he enlarged our coast. He has been faithful. We thank him for January to December, God has been faithful. None is lost, God has been faithful. You're still here in the land of the living, God has been faithful. You're not lying on the hospital bed, God has been faithful. So we give him all the glory. Now we're about to go into 2016 and I began yesterday a series of teaching which are titled Fulfilling Your Potential. And this is part two. Tonight I would like to look at the topic, Be All That God Wants You To Be. This is to inspire us and get us ready for 2016. We began by studying the books of Matthew chapter 25 from verse 14 to 30. Now in the Bible describes the parable of the talent and it showed that God has not sent anybody into this world without a talent. One was given five, one was given two, and one was given one. Nobody is born empty. And that is good news for you and I. Because in 2016, may you find opportunities to express your God-given talent in the precious name of Jesus Christ. There's something in you that is just yearning to come out. There's something in you that just want to have an expression. You have an heavenly mission on earth. And I pray that you will fulfill destiny in the precious name of Jesus Christ. 2016 is a year that I'm, ex I'm very, very excited about because God has spoken specific things to me about it. Now, before we hear the prophetic word, let us hear the word of the Lord. And shall we begin by prayer? Now, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we want to thank you so much for 2015. Thank you for your love, your guidance, your protection. Thank you for what you have done. What you did, O oh Lord our God, is beyond comprehension. Thank you for all the testimonies, the signs, the wonders. Thank you for new houses, new jobs, new cars. Thank you for career. Thank you for promotion. Thank you for multiple sources of income. Thank you for increase. Thank you for enlarging our coast. Thank you that we have health. Thank you for visible and invisible blessing. We give you all the glory and praise. Father, before we cross over into 2016, we sit at your feet to listen to your word. Lord, open our eyes of understanding. And I pray that the words that shall speak shall not be of myself. Lord, give me clarity of thought and eloquence of your speech to speak your word with accuracy that would describe to your people what's on your heart for them in this season. And I pray none shall be lost among us as we cross over into 2016. To the glory and praise of your holy name. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Now, praise the name of Jesus Christ. So excited about the year ahead because it's a year like no other. A year that we will have opportunities to express our God-given abilities. Now, very few people among the 6 billion people plus, 6 billion people plus on earth, has maximized their potential that God has given to them. Many people live mediocrity or a mediocre lives. Their talents and capabilities go untapped. Many people are yearning for opportunities and yet they are suffering in frustration. More, some people have gone to the extreme of committing suicide because they, have, they see that life has nothing to offer to them. I want to give you hope. I want to give you a light at the end of the tunnel. Because faith does not only see life at the end of the tunnel, it sees life outside the tunnel. And I believe that in this year, 2016, ahead of us, you shall have opportunities to fully express yourself in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Your talent, when it goes unused, or your strength and abilities, when it goes unused, brings frustration. Because you, there's something in you that believes you're better than your present situation. The great wealth of potential within you, when it goes unused, is like you sitting on fire. And it seems to burn you, but you can't move. You seem to be stuck to one position. It can only bring pain, anguish, and frustration. And I pray that you shall no longer be frustrated in the precious name of Jesus Christ. 
God has made you to be resourceful. God has made you to be an important part of his end time army. God has called you specifically for this season because he has a divine assignment for you. Remember, your life must not be wasted because the world is earnestly waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. That's why you and I must not waste away our ideas, our potential, our God-given ability. We must learn to adapt, repair, reuse, and recycle so that we can constantly bless humanity and leave an indelible footprint in the sand of time. We are called to be creative. That's why we must constantly seek for alternative to a situation that confronts us. We must find a way out. Because we have been given talents as stewards of God's talent, we must be able to find a way out. And I believe in 2016 that excuses will no longer be acceptable before the Almighty God. Because He has given us all that He can. He has given us His only begotten Son to die for us as a sacrifice for our sin. He has given us the Holy Spirit to impact the wisdom of heaven into us. So we have no more excuses that we can say and it's going to suffice before the Almighty God. You and I have been called in a time like this. That's why Paul said, I can do all things to Christ that strengthens me. The Bible says in the books of Ephesians chapter 5 verse 16 that we should make most of every opportunity that we have. And it also says that whatever your, fight, your hand finds to do, he said, do it with all of your might. Don't give up. God is on your side. I'm so excited, so I can hardly contain myself. And I would like to describe the word of the Lord to you as accurately as, accurate, uh, accurately as I've heard it from heaven. I've been spending the last few days praying and seeking the face of God concerning his plan as an agenda for the year. And he has spoken some things to me. Some of it are personal, some of it are for public consumption. But before we get into that, how do we maximize our potential? How do we become all God wants us to be? Number one, you must establish your, your relationship with God. See, a river that forgets its source will run dry. When many of us taste success for the very first time, the first thing we do is abandon God. When you taste success in 2016, the first thing you should do is anchor your life on, in God. Because you see, once you forget your God and you forget your source, you will run dry. And I pray that you will not run dry in the precious name of Jesus Christ. God is the giver of talents. Remember the parable of the talent that we looked at yesterday. The one that had much more that was productive with it, God who gave the talent took from the one that had least and gave it to the one that had more. So because he had more, he had greater. Why? Because God expanded him and increased him. May God increase you in 2016 in the precious name of Jesus Christ. So your relationship with God in 2016 must move up a gear or two, if possible three. In other words, it's not a time to have lazy Christianity. You simply attend only Sunday service and beyond that you do nothing else. Your Bible, the pages are so neat and clean because you have never opened it. It's time to invest in a, a strong relationship or a viable relationship with God because we want our source to be constant. We want the source from heaven, the supply of heaven to be constant. You see, that's why the Bible says, give us our daily bread because we want a constant supply. Yesterday's bread is going to be stale for today. Remember the children of Israel in the wilderness. They were not allowed to keep the manna of yesterday to today or to the next day because he has gone off. God constantly supplies us. And if you want his constant supply, then you must connect to the source. This is so crucial. And that's why I've placed it at number one. Number two, you must understand that how God has made you. Many people don't truly know themselves. Many people don't. 
there's potential in them that is yet to be realized. They don't know themselves. I mean, you look at yourself in the mirror in the morning or in the evening or as many times as you do during the day, but beyond that, you don't know yourself. You have never seen yourself as God has seen you. That he made him, sent his only begotten son, and from heaven to earth to die for our sins. When you truly see yourself as God wants, to, he wants you to see yourself, or God sees you, believe me, your action, your reaction, your way of life, your thinking will change. And one of the prayers I believe that you should pray constantly in this year, 2016, is God, show me my true self. Because once you see that, believe me, your, your life will change. Once you understand how you function, how you move, what you do best, the best time for you to pray. These are simple things, but yet make a great impact in your life. It changes our level of relationship with God. I've discovered that I can spend all night praying because during the day I have multiple things, um, you know, wanting my time. So discover your true self. Learn who you are. Ask God for help so that he can give you a mirror that will show you your back and you can see clearly and make necessary adjustments in your life. As Christians, we are expected to live by faith, but faith does not replace diligence. If you're going to realize your potential, then you must work hard. Laziness, distraction, and compromise will only diminish the full potential that you have. And you must also learn to handle people criticizing you. Because many people have been discouraged and have not developed. Keep your shortcoming in perspective, but continue to walk because you're constantly a work in progress. That's why I've said several times that no level you get to, there's always a level above you. Strive for excellence. There's a natural inclination in us that simply is attracting us towards something. I've often told those who are younger than me when I get the privilege to teach them that there were times in my life before I had ever had the opportunity to ever step on an altar to preach. That I'll be walking around in a room or wherever I am, preaching to the chairs and tables. I felt there were multitudes around me as I speak the word of the living God. Not knowing God was preparing me to be his servant. So begin to study yourself. And I need you to understand this. There are natural giftings, natural inclination in you that needs to be developed and matured. There are unique gifts in you and talent that God has placed in you for his own usefulness in this end time. We must not try to imitate somebody else who may have a different gifting from ours because there are many photocopies in the world, but God has made you as an original. And I pray that you will not lose your identity in the precious name of Jesus Christ. I believe number two now is that we must seek inspiration. Many of us are in an environment where our talent is being discouraged. We have no inspiration to grow, no inspiration to enlarge our coast. I've told this story before. Let me share the story of an, um, a German shepherd, an Alsatian dog, that was pregnant at one point in time. And suddenly, um, he was, or the, she was hit by a, 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 a truck on the highway. And because of that, she lost one of her legs. But fortunately for her, her puppy was saved and they were delivered safely. But you see, the owner noticed as the puppies begin to, began to grow, they began working on three legs. Now, he was concerned because he had a business of selling the puppies to those who love Alsatian dogs. And suddenly... He noticed they were working on three legs, so he took them to the veterinarian to have a look to see what was wrong. The veterinarian did all the tests he could do and discovered that there was nothing wrong with their legs. What they found out was their inspiration, which was their mother, worked on three legs and saw the puppies began to work on three legs too. What inspiration do you have around you? Is it people who cannot see beyond the length of their nose or people who have seen far and wide? 
because they will influence you, they will encourage you, or they will discourage you. Are you a God pleaser or you are you a man pleaser? The difference between Saul and David was that Saul constantly sought to please the people, which later turned against him because they began to sing David's praises the moment David slew the uh, Goliath. Are you a God pleaser like David who constantly sought the face of God before he went to the battle? Believe me, friends, there will be times when people will leave you, when people will go away from you, your influence, your inspiration, your things that you believe in, those are the things that will stand with you at that point in time. Number four, be innovative. Many Christians like to be spoon-fed, and I've, I've noticed that in the body of Christ. That's why every little thing, every little dream, every little thing that happened, they call their pastor. Pastor, I had a dream last night. I saw the cockroach flying around. What does that mean? Pastor, I, I, I slept and suddenly when I woke up, I saw ant climbing on my legs or my hands. You forgot that you had a donut that has sugar on it and suddenly ants is attracted by sugar. So we are yet to stand firm. We are not matured. Innovation comes from, mat um, uh, comes from maturity. Now, look at the company Apple. If Apple stood at their first phone, which was the iPhone, the first one, Believe me, the company would have gone into bankruptcy. But because they have stayed on the frontier of innovation, currently we are on iPhone 6S, I believe, and they are constantly looking to bring out new more phones. They are showing innovation, uh, innovation and they are constantly expanding their horizon, increasing their profitability. So if you're going to maximize your potential in this new year, then you must be innovative. Look for new ways of solving old problems. Because millionaires or people that prosper are those that solve other people's problems. And I pray that heaven will release to you ideas and innovations that you will be able to solve the greatest riddles on earth. Take initiative. Don't wait before to do things because opportunities will pass before you that you must be able to take initiatives for and be able to maximize that moment. Because once it flows by, it flows to the next person and if the person, next person grabs it, then he has first by advantage. And I pray your opportunity and your moment will not pass you by in 2016 in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Number six, be teachable. It's because every one of us need instruction. See, you will never become an expert in anything. Every one of us needs to learn. Even those that write theses and write journals, they're still learning. They're still reading. They're still learning. So you and I still have a long way to go. People who think to themselves they know it all are the most ignorant people on earth. And the devil will constantly capitalize on their ignorance. And I pray none of us shall fall victim to the enemy in the precious name of Jesus Christ. We must cultivate our potential, fertilize it like a seed. We must learn to share our potential because no man exists in isolation. You see, there are many things in life that we are yet to know. And we can only know them when we begin to rub mind with those who are like-minded. The Bible says, iron sharpened iron, a man's countenance sharpened that of his friend. May you find the right people to sharpen you. Focus on your potential in 2016 and not your limitation. Because like the man who at the pool of Bethsaida for 38 years, all he kept focusing on was that there was nobody to put him in the pool when the angel turned the waters. And I pray that your helpers of destiny will come your way this season. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Never speak negatively about yourself. Never disagree with God concerning you. Because I have discovered God has released the blessing, but we fight against God. And God cannot override our decision, our will. It leaves us to our own. And I pray in 2016 that you will speak in line with what God is saying concerning you. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. 
Meditate on your God give you strength. Like I said, nobody is born empty. There's something about you that God has given uniqueness. He has sent you into this world to do for him. You have an heavenly mission. Now, whether or not you've discovered it, that's a different case completely. But I believe that you have something peculiar that God has given to you. This year, 2016, as we go into it, there will be ample opportunities. And may your eyes be open to see it and be able to maximize it and take advantage of it in the precious name of Jesus Christ. 2016 is just a few hours away. Just a few hours away. And I'm sure many of us are excited about it. We are going to be a year older. We are going to be, you know, um, going back to work any more money. But life is more than that. Because there's something in you that's yearning for expression. I believe that strongly. There's something in you that's yearning for expression. Six is the number of man. And we are going into 2016. And on the sixth day, God made man. And he endowed him with all the blessings in heaven. He blessed him, he said, be fruitful, be multiplied, subdue the earth. What we lost in Adam, God has restored through Jesus Christ back unto us. And I believe that 2016 is that year where we have full expression of all the things that God has deposited in us. May you not miss out on the grace that's available in 2016 in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now, don't give up, don't give in. Seek encouraging an environment. Glorify God in all that you do because any, any river that forgets its source will run dry. May you not run dry in the precious name of Jesus Christ. 2016 is a year like no other. Do not procrastinate. Overcome your failure. Be diligent. Be faithful in little. Because God surely that sees you in secret will reward you openly in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now, shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory and honor. We bless your holy name. Now, we thank you so much for your word that's come tonight with power. Lord, I just thank you for all that you've done for us in 2015. Thank you for your goodness in the land of the living. We're still alive and well because of you. Lord, we give you all the glory and praise. Father, as we have entered into 2016, Lord God of heaven, I pray. That every single day of this year, Lord, shall be a day of joy, a day of rejoicing. And I pray, my Lord and my God, that the blessings of 2016 shall not pass us by in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, my Father. Blessed be your mighty name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Happy New Year to every single person. God bless you. Welcome to a year. Of fulfillment of potential your potential shall be fulfilled this year in the precious name of Jesus Christ I believe every word of God that he has spoken this year shall be fulfilled in the precious name of Jesus Christ now as we listen to the word of the year the Lord has spoken some things unto me which I would like to share with us I might not be able to share every single one of them but I will encourage you to go on the website the the full details of the prophetic word for the year will be available on the website and um, you can get yourself acquainted with it you can copy and download it and begin to use it as a prayer point and begin to use it to meditate god who has seen us through 2015 and given us grace and glory and testimonies i believe surely as he has spoken concerning 2016 he will do exceedingly abundantly above anything we can ask of according to the power that working in us the scriptural focus for the year is found in the books of Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, which I've just quoted. This is a year of the fulfillment of potential. And I believe that everything in us that's like dormant will be on earth and be used for the glory of God in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now, number one, this is a year of self-discovery. Your true worth will be realized this year. And I believe that this word shall find practical expression in your life in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Number two, long time prophecies shall be fulfilled and all deeds will be repaid in full. 
Some good deeds will be repaid in full. Somebody somewhere will be remembered. This is a year that there will be a sudden rise to prominence. The forgotten will be remembered. The, the, the word that came to me is the rising from ashes. Number four, this is a year of healing, particularly viruses. Some virus that we have been carrying for years will be healed this year. A major breakthrough, I believe, also in the medical field will be achieved this year. This is a year of major financial breakthrough. This is a good year for people to uh, venture into business. For those who have business ideas, this will be a year to, um, to implement them. This is a year that God wants to walk through men for the establishment of his kingdom. For those who are available to him. This is a year that excuses will not be valid for not doing anything. For there will be opportunities to express your God-given talents. This is a year of increase and enlargement for those who are diligent. This is a year of strange helpers of destiny to cross your path. And many more, and I don't have all the time in the world to read every one of them to you. This, this uh, morning, uh, I believe that you should get yourself acquainted with a prophetic word for the year. It's going to be online on our website. I believe that uh, the word of the Lord has come so strongly to me this year will find practical expression in your life and you will not miss out on any of the blessings in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that this year, 2016, none of us will die. We shall live to declare the glory and the works of God in the land of the living. Thank you for bringing us safely into 2016. We give you all the glory, Lord, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Praise God. Happy New Year to every single person. God bless you. God bless you. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Praise God.